Dirac current is conserved. That's really the electric current if you like. Dirac current is conserved. J alpha equals, this is the electric charge, E times psi bar times gamma alpha times psi. And it's conserved. So, um, and we know, and this we have formulated from uh, in the first lecture, if we make a variational principle and we uh, look for invariances, we have defined the substantial variation, if you recall, psi star of E A. Well, now I should call it psi, psi A, because uh, all psi edges. Is uh, equal variation of the psi minus the transport term variation of x a times partial k times psi. And the uh, variation of the action function we determine to be integral over b for x, and then there was just like it, a, a field equation, the L over b. Psi, and if this is zero, this term of course vanishes times the substantial variation of psi. And then we have this divergence term minus partial i times L dxi uh, plus, and now we have this characteristic term, the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the velocity. Times substantial variation of psi. So that's uh, the starting point. And so we have just the naked Dirac equation. And the idea which I now have, well, he recognized in the neutral theorem, of course, that uh, this comes about because the Lagrangian is invariant under phase transformation. So if you go from psi to psi dash equals psi times e to the i, e, that's electric charge, we just put in for convenience, times alpha. Alpha is um, uh, a scale of uh, uh, value and the uh, cos of psi bar dash is then minus e to the minus a uh, i e alpha. Then, uh, and this corresponds to this transformation <coughs> of u1, the circuit rule, u1. So it's invariant. Under rigid, under rigid phase transformations. So it's really basically a theory, and, and usually nowadays it's called gauge transformation. Gauge was originally phase transformation. It's just the phase of the, uh, of the wave, wave function which is uh, transformed. And if it's invariant, 
uh, you can read off from okay. here. We assume the field equation to be fulfilled. It's one shell. Dx doesn't change, so that's zero. And here you have just the change of the substantial derivation. The substantial derivation is the variation of psi because this term drops out. Uh, so all what we have is d psi, which is equal to be uh, developed in a, in, a, in a Taylor series, i times d times alpha times psi plus i times d times alpha square over two factorial times psi plus etc. Maybe if we just keep the linear term, I invested in the infinite as a mode transformation. Then uh, you can substitute here it, and then it, it's valid for arbitrary uh, transformations, and then you see that this piece is is uh, is the current, uh, which is just the DL derived with respect to that minus uh, if you substitute the deep side this first term, and then you discover this is exactly apart from the vector alpha exactly this. Uh, current and the divergence of this current is equal to zero. So divergence of this current equal to zero is a consequence is a consequence of rigid gauge transformations of rigid Nothing happened so far. All what happened is that we recognized that the Dirac current is conserved because of phase invariance of the Dirac Lagrangian. And now the gauge uh, concept starts. Now, and th this is what, what uh, Niall uh, quoted earlier, now we go to local and which you quoted with local uh, gauge transformation. And then we find a new field. This is the original wild procedure for, for finding uh, the new fields. So we have the Iraq equation. And we have So we have this conserved current. Yeah, the problem with this transformation is why pure compact space is not allowed. Yes, yes. Yeah, in this case, it do not allow pure compact space. Yes, yeah. space time is usually. I mean, here we are in the space time. And now it's in section 2.6. I uh, have now right sketch principle. Of course, argue this is a, a ridiculous because we know already the electromagnetic field. But this is uh, at the time uh, uh, you could argue like this, but later we see that this is not uh, really uh, on the point. So uh, now he uh, he said, uh, and 
this argument is really a good from general relativity. You cannot make um, in a curved space time a phase transformation which is rigid at, at all uh, space times. You have to, trans uh, to, and also the argument by Yang and Mills later sounds similar. You have to transport this information uh, how a big function alpha is from one point to another point. So uh, we now want that this rigid uh, uh, transformation is substituted by a rigid um, uh, transformation is substituted by a local transformation because we believe in local uh, field theory. So, uh, and so you, you introduce a psi dash is equal uh, e to the e, uh, e alpha and the alpha now becomes a function of x was a constant earlier time style. And now it becomes a function of x. Of x. Because we cannot fix the constant uh, field order of the space time and there to be spread the information. And these are heuristic arguments. And now we see that of course the derivative note that the derivative of this uh, psi hash partial pi is no longer invariant under this transformation. It's equal, it picks up an additional piece, E by E alpha of x bracket the partial pi of psi, and it picks up an additional term can easily compute by differentiation uh, up to first order i e partial derivative i of alpha of e <coughs> applied to psi. Okay, and now the idea was we are looking for a field which compensates this violation of gauge invariance. That is what was called in the history a compensating field sometimes. It, comp it com <coughs> compensates this, uh, non, uh, this additional piece which destroys which destroys which destroys compensating. And what Weil found out, we could introduce a field, A, the vector field, AI, for the compensating field. And this additional piece um, should transform in a certain way. That this additional field, R, is equal AI, and now, uh, in order to compensate for this value, we have to add uh, something like uh, which we is given here. So this is plus 1 over E times partial I of alpha. And then you see that if you substitute partial derivative of psi by what is nowadays called the gauge covariant derivative pi with respect to uh, pi this is uh, what is called the gauge covariant which is by definition the old the partial one which we had before we introduced the compensating field plus the compensating field plus
times I E times A I applied to Psi. This, and this compensating field is nowadays called H potential. This H potential. So we substitute the partial derivative by a gauge covariant derivative. And if you recall, now just in order to get a feeling, if you have an ordinary tensor and tensor <coughs> computations, um, a partial derivative, and you uh, uh, transform it into a covariant derivative, covariant derivative EI with respect to a connection applied to a vector, say, this is just a, doesn't belong, it's just a, a remark in order to make partial i of v j uh, plus gamma, which is a connection i k j times v k. Then you see, this is like we have in, in tensor calculus, you substitute the partial derivative by a covariant one, and here you have then a connection. So this a is like a connection. You substitute the partial derivative by a covariant one. And this A is also uh, not has an inhomogeneous transformation behavior because the A dash is equal to A plus a gradient of this H function. And uh, now we are we have instead of the Dirac portion, I can now since you probably all have copied it if you do it really. Uh, you have here now a gauge covariant derivative, here a gauge covariant derivative. Then you have a new Lagrangian. And now, of course, I can always, by a gauge transformation, I can transform these terms to zero because this is an inhomogeneous term. So this is no new information. So a new information is only if you cannot transform away this inhomogeneous term. So and what is the proof for that? Of course, you build the, the curl of this, then the curl of a gradient is of course vanishing. <coughs> and so the curl of the gauge potential, now I am perhaps I erase here a little bit. <coughs> Basically, it's done. We have this uh, this curl, and uh, so we, we introduce the curl. <coughs> H field strength, it's called. H field strength. F I J. This is by definition the curl of. Um, Strength is the two form, you can also write two form, it's just F equals EA. It's a two form or a tensor, second plane, and high symmetric, of course. Mm. And I add this to the Lagrangian, so I have a total Lagrangian. Total Lagrangian is the Dirac Lagrangian, minimally coupled to matter, so symbolically written psi. And here I have the gauge covariant derivative with respect to the gauge potential I as applied to psi plus 
going for this is conventional times f i j f i j because I have to add something to the Lagrangian and since it's the second plane tensor, the simplest thing I can do is to add a square of this. And of course, this is now the Dirac Maxwell theory. And you can of course now uh, expand this uh, <coughs> from the free Iraq field. So, and this is was my discuss, uh, discussion with uh, Dr. Yu. Um, I call a gauge theory a theory which is exactly produced in this out of this pattern. And if, if you can do that, it's a gauge theory, and, and, and that's what, what uh, uh, exactly this pattern, uh, Yang Mills repeated in, in 1954, but not for the electric current, but for the isotopic spin current, for the conserved isotopic spin current. And this is a concept which uh, Utiyama then uh, in 1956 generalized to, to all semi-simple Lie groups plus the Lorentz group. And the Lorentz group he believed is the case group of gravity. This turned out to be not the case. And it was then uh, Shiyama and Kipper in 61 which uh, uh, successfully derived uh, the uh, uh, gravitational gauge field theory, basically what is nowadays called the Breitaia gauge field theory, from this, uh, using this principle. So the gauge principle is a heuristic procedure. Heuristic means something which helps you to find the truth. It's a heuristic principle. Heuristic principle. principle uh, to, uh, to derive from a conserved current and from, uh, so I have a, and that concludes my lecture, um, I have a current, I have a picture adapt, adapted from Bob Mills. you have a rigid symmetry of blood washing. The rigid symmetry of Lagrangian L M matter. In our case, we study the Dirac field, which depends on psi and the psi. And by Noether's theorem, because you have a rigid symmetry, you can derive the conserved current. Conserved current. And uh, now you go over to local gauge symmetry from this rigid symmetry to the local gauge symmetry. Local gauge symmetry. 